thanks for joining EYFS today. I'm here with four practitioners, two from Leeds and two from Birmingham, from a setting that is pretty special to me as it's the school I went to myself. It's great to meet you all. So, let's think what a unique child means to us. Okay. So where does it hurt? Where? Here. Where did it hurt? Okay. Does anyone hurt it? Where did it yes. hurt? Yes. Where did it hurt? Really, really sore. Let's make it better. Rawr! Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, it's okay, darling. Give them. Thank you. Fantastic. Hello? Yeah, where did it hurt? Okay, let's put some water. That's exactly what the unique child means, doesn't it? How do you give that child that sense of their own unique personality as they sit and work amongst a group of other children which sits within a setting? Mm. I think what this document does is bring us back to the individual as mm. the, at the heart of that wider yeah. community. Do you think this will challenge some people's practices? Absolutely. Uh, the document is... Um, very user friendly. Mm. It's easy to read. You can um, see the care throughout every strand of it, which is at the root of it all, really. Trying to put this into place and linking it with what previous knowledge we've already mm. got. It just sits so well. The results are phenomenal day in, day out. The children are building in self confidence, their self esteem is mm. going through the roof. Mm. They're participating in activities that we never thought they'd mm. ever participate in and finding their voice and um, it's just taking that risk that no you don't have to be um, at their shoulder all the oh, time, yeah. stand back, mm. let it's, them I, learn. It's about trusting them isn't it? Absolutely. It is. Trusting yes. their yeah. individual capacity to take themselves forward. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. this will be very empowering for practitioners. Definitely. Um, I think it will give practitioners the confidence mm. to, to move forward really and mm. to give children that opportunity to to develop and learn and and t take things their own their own way. The children finding their own voice, mm -hmm. which yes. a lot of children and having a voice that will be listened yeah. to as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, yeah. and it's just having their own individual input yeah. and their just being team. themselves, which mm -hmm. is what we mm -hmm. want. I think it'll be a great challenge for some people taking that step outside the box. And some people are very cut and dry, aren't they? Some people see what's in front of them and think, I can do that. But it, it's thinking, how can I do that in lots of different ways? Or how can I do that in a, a way that will capture the children's imagination? Yeah. Now, inclusive practice is the second commitment in a unique child. Take a look at this. <laughs> If I was that little girl whose mum had got up and danced in assembly, I'd just mm. be feeling so proud and so special mm. that she'd come and done that. Mm. I think there's confidence that they had to do that in front of the other parents and, and in front of practitioners, I thought was just mm. amazing, really, mm. that they felt secure and happy to do it. Yes, it's, it's a symbol of their confidence with you and your openness yes. as a setting that they they and they work. feel comfortable as yeah. well to do that. Yeah. Not I just because they, they enjoyed it, didn't they? Yes, you know, they did. Everybody enjoyed it. I don't think I ever would have done that as a parent when my children were at school. No. I don't think no. I would have been able no. to do that. So how do you do that? How do you create that kind of atmosphere and that ethos where parents do feel confident to come in and share who they are? I don't think it just happens overnight. I think it's no. something that's built up over time. And the fact that we are a unit and children join us when they're three in nursery, so we actually know some of the parents for, for two years. Right. You just build it up over that time by mm. always being there to talk, mm. always a smile as well, yeah. which yeah. I think is so important. Yeah. 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 And yeah. to feel that they're valued, that what parents say is listened to. Uh, That's a really important point you make there about listening, because sometimes as practitioners we seem to do a lot of 
telling and yes. not so much listening yes. to p what parents yes. have got to bring to the party, don't we? And I think it's yeah. really very important as well to give positive feedback mm. as often mm. as you can to parents mm. so yeah. they can celebrate what their children can do at school and then we can mm. celebrate what, what they can do at home as well and we link do, the two mm. together. We do quite a lot of parent partnerships where we get the parents to come in yeah. on workshops yes. and mm. just seeing them as partners, isn't it? And seeing that they right. have a key role, they are the child's key educator. Mm but then yeah. working as in a partnership yeah. to get the best out of the children that yeah. we have. Yeah. It's just worth all the effort. Mm. They've trusted mm. you so much with their child mm. and um, with their needs, with the parents' needs yeah. as well. You've understood mm -hmm. that it is a, a big wrench to um, mm. hand them over mm. to yes, somebody for six it hours is. a day. Yeah. To be really yeah. aware of that loss for the parent um, and the loss for the child. Mm. and be there as a, a, a security blanket for both, really. Mm. Keeping safe is the next commitment. So how safe is safe? Some of those children were pushing their capacities to the limits, taking some risks and learning about all kinds of things in, in those situations. I think in that case in particular, um, we explained very carefully to the children that it was gloss paint, paint that children don't usually use. Mm. Um, we, we explained to them what would happen if they got it on their clothes, for example. That's really important to give them the information that they need mm. um, to be able to then make their own judgments. They were given the opportunity to use something they wouldn't normally be able to use and it was the right paint for the job because those tubes are for outside. Mm. The children will try these new things but knowing there's that little bit of a safety net, yeah. you are yeah. there, yeah. if it all goes yeah. wrong I have got an adult mm. or a carer mm. or somebody there and they will just push themselves and push their boundaries that little bit more because they know they've got that safety net. Mm. I think the personal, social and emotional development of children is a strong element of giving ch children the capacity to keep safe. Can you tell us a bit about how you work with those dimensions? I think PSE and all of the elements of that is a key factor for the rest of the child's learning. I think that once that's developing, then I think children, if they're happy, secure, safe, they're ready to learn. Mm. Um, in our setting, we do promote positive relationships throughout all every, everything we do. We always promote that. Um, mm. from coming in in the morning and saying to the children, oh, I really like your hairband, or aren't your shoes mm. beautiful today? Mm. They're starting off with a compliment. It would boost their self-esteem, mm. and it sets them up for a happy day, I think. Mm. Children are quick to pick up on, on risk, aren't they, as well? We have scissors, and, and our children will turn around and say, mm. you're not holding those properly. If you fall, that's going to cut you. And, and mm. they know now to... And it's just one simple, quick discussion mm. with the children about keeping safe and making sure that they were safe in the classroom environment. Mm. And, um, and I think they're quite articulate in that way. They can pick up... Mm risk and how to avoid it or how not to, to hurt themselves or others. Don't you think there are some boundaries around that? I mean, how much risk and how do you ensure that the risk doesn't go, turn into recklessness? Mm. I think, to some extent, children they make their own boundaries. For example, when we, when we go in the hall and um, for the first time when they get the, the really big climbing frame out that goes right up to the ceiling, um, I think you've got to trust that children will stop when they've gone high enough. Mm. They, they'll only do what they're capable of doing. But with also, there has to be um, a framework for that to, to fall in. We have to have rules about the climbing frame, about them not being able to push anyone or to jump from very high up. And so mm. it's about having a framework for the children to operate within, mm. um, which enables them to, to take their own risks, but yeah. also them knowing their own capabilities at the same time. It's like a mixture of the two, really, isn't it? It's All a balance, combined, really, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Mm. Let's talk about wellbeing. Maeve, this is a great clip of a parent in your setting. Let's watch. I know it's quite a long time ago, but we've been asking parents to have a look at the things that they wrote before their children started school. Do you remember you wrote down what you hoped for Erin? Yeah. 
I hope Miley Clavin continues to be eager and keen to learn and that she develops her kind and sharing nature and remains as loving to her friends and parents and auntie as she has been. Also that she continues to have fun while still learning and finding out about new things. We all want Erin to just continue to be Erin and never lose the brightness that is her. The bit that strikes me is the final line, keeping the brightness mm. within her. Mm. And I just feel it's our job to feed their souls with education, mm. with seeing the awe and wonder in the world around them, mm. taking them outside um, to look at a leaf, to experience a snowy day, a rainy day, mm. and see all those wonderful things and help them to realise that they can learn through that as well as within the classroom setting as well. Mm. Erin's dad's speech, it, it did bring tears to my eyes, watching mm. it, realising how, as you said, it totally in, in, in enchanted with her. Um, mm. And it, it sort of, as a practitioner, it's very, very powerful to sit and watch that. Mm. And you, you think, actually, yes, he's not interested in the literacy in the numeracy part. He's, he's interested in the fact that Erin, as a person, is developing mm. and carrying on with that personality that she's got, that's mm. a wonderful personality that she has. And so what, enriching what, what she what she's But about. also, what, um, what, what trust to give you the responsibility mm. for that mm. child. It is an entrustment, isn't it? When the child first comes to school in the morning, that you speak to that child, but we always address the parents mm. as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. usually, on uh, first name terms, um, we speak to them. Mm. And it also puts us in a really privileged position when some parents are going through a crisis of sorts mm. and want mm. to talk to you about what's happening, mm. and mm. therefore you can help their child, mm. support their child while something's going on that's not very happy at home. It's just nice having that relationship that they can approach you. So thinking of, of, of the, the conversation we've had and the, the, uh, the children that we know, do you feel this Early Years Foundation Stage document is a step forward to provide for children more effectively? It's broken down into so many easy steps to use and it's mm. easy to read, it's manageable. And it's not this, just this whole thing that you're thinking, oh, my goodness me, how daunting. I've got mm. to try and deliver all this and mm. this. It's broken down into different steps, mm. which is easy to apply. I think, firstly, we have to remember that we're all unique children and we all started out from different backgrounds, different mm. races, um, religious beliefs, and we want to live in this world valued and respected. And I think as adults... If we know that, we should strive mm. um, to recognise that in every child mm. that walks through our door and nurture that and hopefully let them see them finish their education as unique but more than when they started. Mm. Mm. We've been really inspired by seeing your settings at work and thank you for your comments too. And thank you for watching. Goodbye. Mm.